Hello friends, today we will talk about helminthic disease which includes filarial and fungal disease, candida infection and myctoma. The main objectives of today's deliberation are introduction about helminthes, to study about filarial diseases, to know about candida infection and to gain knowledge about myctoma. So first of all about helminthes. The term helmet has been derived from a Greek word meaning worm. It was originally meant to refer to only intestinal worms but now includes many other worms including tissue parasites as well as many free living species. These are metazoa and are classified into two phylums that is platyhelminthes and nematyhelminthes. Helminths do not possess organs of locomotion. Locomotion is generally by muscular contraction and relaxation. The outer covering known as cuticle or integument is tough and may be armed with spines or hooks. It is resistant to intestinal digestion. Digestive system is absent or rudimentary and the nervous system is primitive type. Reproductive system is very well developed. Eggs are produced in enormous numbers as few of them survive and manage to infect a suitable host. Now the filariasis. Infection with any one of the seven filarial worms may be called filariasis, but traditionally the term filariasis refers to lymphatic filariasis, which is caused by Vacheria banicrofti or Brugia species. According to the normal habitat of the adult worm, the human filariasis can be classified as lymphatic, which includes Vacheria banicrofti. Brugia malia and Brugia timori. Second is subcutaneous, which includes Loa Loa, Onchocerea volvolus, Mansonilla streptocera, and third one is serous cavity, which includes Mansonilla ozadi. Mansonilla perstans. Now, first of all, Vacheria bancrofti. Its synonym is Filaria sanguinis hominis or Filaria bancrofti or Vacheria pacifica. Its disease are bancroftian filariasis and elephantiasis. Its location in the host. The adult worms live in the lymphatic or lymph nodes, either of the lower limbs and groins or of the upper limbs. Sheeted microfilaria are found in the blood. Now its morphology. Like all filaria of man, the adults of Vacheria banicrofti are long, thread-like, creamy, white worms. The head at is slightly swollen and has two rows of 10 sessile papillae. The cuticle is smooth with very fine transverse tracians. The posterior end of the female is finely tuberculated. The female worm measures about 80 to 100 micro into 0.25 micrometer in size, while the male worm measures about 40 into 0.1 mm. The tail end of the male is curved ventrally and contains two spicules of unequal length. The females though liberate egg two embryos are really oviviparous that is laying eggs with well developed embryos. Males and females remain coiled together. The adult worms live for many years probably 10 to 15 years or more. Now, the another microfilaria. From lymphatic, microfilarias find their way into the circulating blood. 
The important features of the microfilaria of Vachera banigrafti are they measure about 290 micrometer in length and 6 to 7 micrometer in breadth. They are very active in their habits and can move both with and against the bloodstream. The sheet represents the chorionic envelope of the egg. It projects at both sides of the microfilaria. It's around 360 micrometer. The larva can move backwards and forwards within it. Its cuticle is lined by subcuticular cells. Somatic cells or nuclei, these appear as granules in the central axis of the body and extend from the head to the tail end. The granules are absent from the tip of the tail. At the anterior, there is a space also divided of granules called the cephalic space, which is as long as broad. With vital stains, a style can be demonstrating projecting from the cephalic space. Now the nerve ring. In the anterior half of the microfilaria, there is an oblique area divided of granules called the nerve ring. Anterior V spot approximately midway along the length of the microfilaria is the anterior V spot which represents the rudimentary excretory system. Posterior V pod, this represents the cloaca or anal pore. G cells or genital cells, these number 4, G1 to G4 and are situated anterior to the anal pore. Internal body of Manson, it extends from the anterior V spot to the G cell and represents the rudimentary elementary canal. Now the lifespan, the lifespan of microfilaria in the human blood could be up to 70 days. Vachera banigrafti passes its life cycle in two hosts, in man and mosquito. Definitive host, this is man in whose lymphatic system the adult worms are harbored. The microfilaria are liberated in the blood which can circulate in the peripheral blood for considerable time and can be picked up by mosquito species during its blood meal. Now, its intermediate host is mosquito in which microfilaria undergoes further development after which they become infected to man. A large number of mosquito species belonging to the genus Culex, Aedes and Anopheles act as intermediate hosts for Vachera bangrafti. Development of microfilaria in the mosquito it's estimated that a drop of blood must contain at least 15 microfilaria to be infected to mosquito. After the filariasis are taken in with the blood meal, the egg sheathing, that's casting of the sheet, occurs in 2 to 6 hours in the stomach. When they penetrate the stomach wall and migrate to the thoracic muscles for further development, during the next two days, they metaphorize into first stage lava, which is so C shaped form with spiky tail measuring about 125 to 250 into 10 to 15 micrometer in size. In a week's time, it molts once or twice to become second stage larva, which measures about 225 to 325 into 15 to 30 micrometer in size. In another week's time, it develops internal structures and becomes the elongated third stage filariform larva, which measures about 1500 to 2000 into 15 to 25 micrometer in size which is actually motile and possesses three distinct caudal papillae. This is the infective stage which infects human beings when mosquito feeds on humans. One microfilaria develops into one infection larva only in mosquito and multiplication occurs. The time taken for development in the mosquito is known as extrinsic incubation period and under 
optimal conditions, it is 10 to 20 days. Infection of man and further development. The infected third stage larva are deposited by the mosquitoes near the puncture site from where the larva enter through the puncture wounds. The larva reach the lymphatic channels, settles down in anguinal, scrotal or abdominal lymphatics and begin to grow into adult forms. In 5 to 8 months, they become sexually mature. The male fertilizes the female and gravid female gives birth to larva. A new generation of microfilaria is emitted in the peripheral circulation, thus completing the life cycle. Now its treatment. Diethyl carbamazine is the drug of choice and it's the only drug currently available for treatment and prevention. It actually kills microfilaria and in large doses may be fatal to adult worms also. Allergic reactions may occur due to antigens from the large number of microfilaria which die on administration of drug. Now it's prevention and control. Two main measures in preventing the disease are first is eradication of vector mosquito and second one is detection and treatment of carriers. Mass chemotherapy in the form of DEC medicated salt has been tried. Carriers are treated with DEC. Now moving to the another one that's Mansonella streptocera. This is found in Africa mainly in Cameroon, Zaire and Nigeria. The adults in man live in the subcutaneous connective tissues. The adult female measures about 25 to 27 into 0.6 to 0.8 mm while the adult male measures about 17 to 18 into 0.4 mm. Microfilaria which occur in the skin are unsheathed, non-periodic and measures about 180 to 240 into 3 micrometer. The tail is tapered and curved to form a hook. The cuticle is striated. Now it's life cycle. Life is not completely worked out but is probably similar to M per stance. Microflarids are discharged into the skin as in Oncocera infections. The condition mimics leprosy. The main presenting symptom is chronic itching dermatis. Occasionally, there may be dermal thickening and hypopigmented areas. Now its diagnosis. Demonstration of microfilaria in the skin, synapse and mesotherection is positive. Its treatment, DEC, is effective in treatment. Therapy is safer than in oncocercasis as eye lesions are not seen. Now another one. Mansonella ozadi. It's a new world filarial found in South and Central America and West Indies. The adults live in the mesentery and subperitoneal tissues. The adult female measures about 65 to 81 into 0.25 mm and has a smooth cuticle. The unsheathed in microfilaria measures about 175 to 240 into 4.5 mm and are found in the blood. Microfilaria show no periodicity. Several species of culicoids and simulium act as vectors. The development in human beings has not been worked out. Now its clinical features. The strain in West Indies is non-pathogenic. In South America, various symptoms such as erythema, dermatitis, pain in the joints, lymphodentopathy and fever are seen. Its diagnosis is made by demonstration of microfilaria in blood and also in the skin sniffs. Now its treatment. Whenever symptoms are present, treatment with DC is indicated. 
Now moving to the another disease that's myctoma. Actually myctoma is a chronic specific granulomatous progressive destructive inflammatory disease. It usually involves the subcutaneous tissue, most probably after traumatic inoculation of the cause to organism. Myctoma may be caused by true fungi or by higher bacteria and hence it is classified as eumyctoma and actinomyctoma respectively. A large variety of microorganisms from various genera and species are capable of producing myctoma. The triad of painless subcutaneous mass, multiple sinuses and cerebrulent discharge containing grades is pathogenic of myctoma. It may spread to involve the skin and the deep structures resulting in destruction, deformity and loss of function. Myctoma commonly produce various disabilities and deformities and in many cases is difficult to treat and can be very fatal. Myctoma is typically present in agriculture workers or in individuals who walk barefoot in dry, dusty conditions. Minor trauma allows pathogens from the soil to enter the skin. Differential diagnosis. The main differential diagnoses are chronic bacterial osteomyelitis, tuberculosis or the early phase of burly ulcer. Other deep fungal infections such as blastomycosis or coccidiomycosis, leishmaniasis, yaws and sphalis should be considered. Now the candida infection. It's caused by the overgrowth of a type of yeast called candida, usually candida albicans. This yeast is normally found in small amounts in the human body, but certain medicines and health problems can cause more yeast to grow, particularly in warm, moist body areas. Candida is a strain of fungus that can cause an infection in your skin, among other locations. In normal conditions, your skin may host small amount of this fungus. Problems arise when it begins to multiply and creates an overgrowth. More than 150 species of Candida exist, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. However, the majority of infections are caused by a species called Candida albicans. Now the types of candida fungus skin infections which includes athlete's foot, oral thrush, vaginal yeast infection, nail fungus, jock itch, diaper rash, invasive candidiasis occurs when candida enters the bloodstream. According to the CDC, there are about 46,000 cases in the United States each year. The outlook for the candida infection is often very good. Generally, the condition isn't serious and can be easily treated. However, uncontrolled infections can lead to potentially life-threatening problems, especially in those with weakened immune systems. Quick treatment can help stop the spread of the fungus while also improving and potentially saving your life. Now what are the causes and the risk factors? Candida skin infections can occur on almost any area of the body, but they are more commonly found in the intertigenous regions. This is where two skins touch or rub together. Such areas include the armpits, groin and skin folds as well as the areas between your fingers and toes. The fungus thrives in warm, moist and sweaty conditions. Normally your skin acts as an effective barrier against infection. However, any cuts or breakdown in the superficial layers of the skin may allow the fungus to cause infection. Candida becomes pathogenic or capable of causing disease. 
when conditions are favorable for it to multiply. Hot and humid weather, poor hygiene or restrictive clothing may produce these conditions. Now its treatment. Treatment for candida skin infection is usually simple. You don't need to be hospitalized unless you have problems with your immune system or the candida has spread to the bloodstream. The doctor may prescribe drying agents with antifungal creams, ointments or lotions that are applied to your skin. Spostry and oral medications are also available. You will be probably prescribed over the counter drugs such as ketoconazole or clotrimazole, both of which are topical. You apply on the top of the skin and from a class of antifungal drugs known as azoles. Candida infections in children. Children can be more prone to candida fungus skin infections when compared to adults. Children are most likely to develop sinus infections, skin rashes including diaper rash, oral thrush and ear aches from candida overgrowth. Symptoms in babies and toddlers can include persistent and heavy diaper rash, skin rash that resemble eczema, white or yellow pads on the tongue or inside of the mouth or cheeks being colky for longer than three months, recurrent ear problems, symptoms that worsen in damp environments or in damp weather. The symptoms in older children include constantly craving sweets, learning disabilities, often being irritable or unhappy, recurrent ear problems, symptoms that worsen in damp environments or in damp weather. Now it's prevention tips. Wear dry fit clothing that helps wick away moisture from your skin. Keep your armpits, groin area and other areas that are prone to infection clean and dry. Always shower and dry yourself thoroughly after activities where you sweat. If you are overweight or obese, properly dry your skin folds. Wear sandals or other open to footwear when it's warm. Change your socks regularly. This brings us to the end of the lecture. Hope you have enjoyed and understood. Thank you and goodbye.